Welcome to Famous Graves. I am your host, Mike Knox. Just wanted to wish everybody happy holidays. We are now on uh, December 26th, and I think they should call this Crippling Debt Day. I think it should be a new national holiday where we all embrace the fact that we are all in debt. Uh, most people are probably going to get paid this Friday, I would imagine, hopefully. Um, but, the, you know, this is really the day where you have, like, you know, $17. You're trying to stretch $17 in a week. And I think that the... I think the federal government should honor that and uh, definitely because everybody, that's the thing, everybody is, everybody doesn't want to say Merry Christmas, they don't want to offend anybody, but that's what everybody's doing. Everybody, for the most part, 99% of the people are celebrating this holiday um, and I do appreciate stores that are open and people that are working on the day, but most, most of it is geared around uh, getting a bunch of crap, buying a bunch of crap and then you have this hoard of stuff that you're figuring out, am I going to save it? Am I going to, you know, am I going to repackage this and give this away? Can I sell any of this? Uh, but again, everybody is in the same boat. They're all left with debt. It's just something that we don't like to talk about. Thus, that's why I think, I feel it should be a national holiday. One of the things I've been seeing a lot on um, TikTok lately is uh, like people want to film a prank. So it's usually like there'll be a, a guy in, uh, he's like in the hardware store and he's like looking at screws. And I don't know if people are aware of this, but especially when you uh, are living in a home uh, where you have to fix something and, and then you're now, now is the time to step up to the plate where you're just like, I have never invested any time in screws and bolts. And I don't know the length of anything. And it's just a big guess. And you're like, you don't really want to Google stuff because Google, you know, for a guy is kind of like asking for directions. Um, you, you, you'll go to YouTube for like, a, you know, teaching you something, but you're in the hardware store. And then for me, I'm like overwhelmed because there's a bazillion screws and, uh, nuts and bolts and everything else, and I can't figure out what it is I'm supposed to get. So it's a, it's a big guessing game. And then some jackass comes up to you and wants to slap the screws out of your hands so that he can film and get some views for his TikTok. That is my point. That needs to stop. We need to leave people alone. Uh, you can go and film all your TikToks that you want. Uh, just leave people out of it. If they didn't sign a release form like the old days where you used to have to do that and ask people's permission, don't prank people. Prank, you know, I tell my kid this. I go, adults don't need to be pranked. You, you, pranks and jokes, little jokes, they're, they're for little children. Uh, and um, you can do your pranks to each other. We can all figure out that it's staged. But don't do it to an unsuspecting person that's just at the hardware store. To me, that's pretty messed up. And it takes civilization back at least 100 years, as far as I'm concerned. The mega millions in uh, lottery there is reached uh, 565 million. I still don't think I'm going to buy a lottery ticket because I'm so lazy. It's just an exhausting process to me to have to go into like a store and um, usually where they, where they sell liquor and stand in line and fill out a form and stuff like that. It, I know that there is, I tried an app that was online and it's still not good. I don't think we're there yet. But if it was just an easier way for me just to, you're, the lottery people are just taking a couple bucks out of my bank account every month to systematically and they're using the same numbers. That would be convenient to me. Right now, the lottery is not at the level of convenience where I want to stand in line to get a lottery ticket. Even though it's a chance that I could win billions of dollars, whatever. This Christmas, there was a woman that... Um, you know, they did like the, the white elephant, uh, um, at the Christmas tree, you know, I guess it was like an office party or something like that. And she, you know, got a gift. She didn't like, somebody stole the gift from her. So then she picked another gift and it was scratch off lottery tickets and she ended up scratching off and, uh, winning, I think a million, million or two or something like that. Basically like after Texas, she's going to get like a million bucks and people were like livid because they were like, she should share that with everybody, um, on, uh, at the at the office and and my two cents here is no she should not because she's playing that game which is an exhausting game by the way she's a most people don't want to go to an office party they don't want to play that game they know they're going to get a lousy gift this lady had her first one stolen from her so she played the game she played the game totally honestly and i think she should keep the money and not have to give it to anybody else and i'm sure somebody in the office you know, somebody named Glenn is uh, probably going to sue her. Um, but I don't think that lawsuit is going to go anywhere. I was looking up the uh, all the people. I guess we forget the people that passed away. But I was looking up all the celebrities, because this is Famous Graves, um, who passed away this year. And I didn't realize how many people passed away this year. And so I just wanted to go over a few of them. One of them was Betty White. She's 99. And, uh, you know, Betty White... Uh, my six degrees of Kevin Bacon is my stepmom would used to play poker with her or was playing poker with her up until pretty much the day she passed away. Um, and, 
So that's my claim to fame, is that my stepmom played poker with Betty White. I bet you didn't know that Betty White liked to play poker. I never got to play. Never. I only met Betty White once through my stepmother, and that was at uh, my that, at their uh, wedding. Um, but she was a very nice lady, and uh, everybody wanted to take pictures with her, and not me. Uh, and I could have been the best man. Also, Olivia Newton-John was 73. She passed away, and uh, just a very memorable uh, actress in Greece, I have to say. And of course... She's an, I believe she's Australian and uh, had a very good singing career. She had a very beautiful voice. And uh, I don't know. I think 73 is just very young. Uh, Angela Lansbury, who was knighted. Um, so she's Dame Angela Lansbury. She was 96. I still remember her from... Uh, I've gone back and watched... I think it's Bed Knobs and Broomsticks where she plays like a... She's like a... I guess she's a witch during World War II. Uh, but it was a, and is it a Disney movie? I don't know. And I just liked it. I thought it was a great movie. I liked her murder she wrote. Uh, I still think stands up. She was a great actress. And if you're going to live, live to 96, I say. Uh, Kirstie Alley passed away at 71. Um, always loved her from Cheers. And she, I just always thought she was very funny. She had a good sense of humor. Um, and uh, I think she was a Scientologist, now that I think about it. Uh, Sidney Poitier, he was 94. Uh, very good actor. And... Uh, there's a movie with him, and he's like an FBI agent, and they're like, I think they're in like the Colorado Rockies or something like that. I can't remember the name of the movie. It was a good movie, though. Uh, David Warner, uh, more I would say more of like a character actor guy, but he played played um, just a, a great, uh, I think he's English, he was 80, um, but I always just remember him playing like a British military guy that, that was angry at people. Of course, uh, Bob Saget passed away, 65, hilarious comedian. Um actually went to his grave, which is uh, Mount Sinai in Los Angeles. Uh, and it, there wasn't a, a placard yet, but I think that they were stalled doing them because of COVID-19. So he, there is a marker that says, a little marker that says his name, but it's like a paper marker. Uh, but I did film that and post that one. Uh, Louise Fletcher, she was the nurse that uh, played a great role as a nurse uh, because in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest because she really looked like she was an angry nurse. And she really reminded me of the nuns when I went to Catholic school. She was 88 but she really had that nun face where she was really pissed off to be there. And I was thinking about this the other day when, uh, I don't know why my parents put me in Catholic school, but they did. And, uh, I wasn't Catholic and we weren't really Christian either. Um, and, uh, but this nun sister, Nancy Jean, she had this continuous dead arm that was always in a sling for the entire eight years that I was there. And she, uh, was just angry. And I just always thought in like second grade, like, why are you so angry? You know, you live in this house for free because it's a convent and you live with like 15 other chicks. That shouldn't be too bad if you think about it. Uh, and she was just angry and bitter the entire time. And my sister said, you know, well, maybe she was mad because she, her arm was in a sling. And, you know, my, my response to that is then fix your arm, Sister Nancy Jean. You know, you don't have to be miserable to children. And uh, not only that, but the children that are paying, the parents are paying good money to go to that school. Um, so I was just, I learned early on. Uh, Eddie Van Dolan, I didn't even know he passed away. He was 63. He was in a lot of 80s movies, and I cannot for the life of me remember one of them. But he had some uh, very beautiful eyes for a man, if I may say so. And uh, he kind of had like a very psychopathic look to him. Um, always that guy that like the, the, like the hitchhiker is picked up and the hitchhikers, you know, like you know, they're arguing with each other and you're thinking to yourself, is the hitchhiker the one that's the murderer or is it the guy driving the car with those eyes, crazy eyes? Uh, again, can't remember what he was in, but I definitely remember his face. Um, also Roger Mosley was 83. He played TC in Magnum PI. Great show. Ran for about eight years. Uh, Tom Selleck and, uh, TC owned the cool chopper that Magnum was always borrowing. And, so TC was always upset um, because Magnum always wanted to borrow the helicopter, and it made sense because Magnum needed the helicopter to get from point A to point B. He needed, you know, he couldn't, he needed to search for somebody. He couldn't do that in the red Ferrari, so he needed that uh, TC to do it. And TC was always upset. You know, he always felt his friend Thomas Magnum was using him, and rightly so because if you think about how much it costs to fly a helicopter, the gas alone is. Uh, you know, it's hundreds of dollars. It's not like you're filling up your car right now. It maybe costs you close to $100. I'm thinking a helicopter's got to be like a 1000 bucks a ride or something like that. Um, and so no wonder TC was always pissed off. I don't blame him. Um, and they're living in Hawaii. It's got to be, you know, very expensive. 
Uh, Peter Botanovich, also the director, he was 82. He uh, had a great career in Hollywood, and um, he also was kind of dipped his toe in scandal when his girlfriend at the time was murdered by her ex-husband. Um, probably something I should talk about one of these days. Uh, but the um, his, ex, his girlfriend at the time was like a, a beautiful playboy, playboy uh, playmate, and she was murdered uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, he, of course, made some great movies. I was always a fan of his, and I was sad. I didn't even know he, he passed away. Uh, Philip Baker Hall was 90 years old. You uh, might remember him in Boogie Nights. He also played in Seinfeld. Um, and, and I'm just riffing here because I, I, uh, I remember uh, Philip Baker Hall very well. But he played like a – he was like the librarian detective – and George didn't return a book on Seinfeld. It was like 30 years later where he was like still after George for not returning the book. And I've always thought about that because I'm sure that I didn't return a book. I mean, and, and nobody even, it's not even in anybody's language anymore, but it was, it was serious business. I mean, if you didn't like, you re didn't return a book to the library or your library at school. Like I remember I didn't, and, you know, you just forget because it's a book. You know, I wasn't reading when I was younger. And then it's, it was like a nickel a day. And then at the end of the year, like, the, li the library would send your parents a bill. And my dad would be like, $5.30. Oh, my God. What are you doing? And, uh, you know, all the parents would freak out about this. I don't think anybody would even care now. I don't think any parent would even blink an eye about that. Nor would the school even uh, charge for a library book because everything now is on an iPad, uh, which is another gripe of mine because uh, my kid has an iPad. The school gives you an iPad, but then they don't have enough ports, you know, like outlets to um, uh, to charge it. So it's like a whole new problem. It's like the new my pencil wasn't sharpened. I lost, you know, I lost my homework, whatever. But now it's hey my my uh, iPad is dying and I can't do my homework because I don't have a charger because this room wasn't designed for it. It's only got, you know, two outlets. Um, so it's, it's an all new ball game out there, kids. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, Louis Anderson, also the comedian passed away. I, I believe he's buried in, uh, Nevada around Las Vegas. I got to go out there, but he was 68 and, um, just a, a great, uh, I always just loved him. He had a, uh, great, and I think I talked about it before, but he had such a, uh, just a great uh, rant in one of his routines where he talks about going to garage sales with his mom and his mom would buy a toaster just because the cord cost 25 cents. And uh, that, that really resonated with me um, because that's how a lot of people would think it would be like, you know, I could get, I could get 25 cents for this cord. I mean, it's priceless. And I don't think anybody thinks that way anymore. Really. There's nobody out there. M Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, 91. He was the Russian, are they presidents in Russia? I don't know, but he was the one that had a birthmark on his head. And that birthmark, now that I think about it, kind of looks like Florida and the Florida Keys. Um, and you know, hats off to him. Never wore a toupee or a hat. Uh, he just, that was his, that was his trademark. And he was kind of, uh, I do believe that it was when Reagan got into office, it was like a, it was, I'm going to go over, Reagan's going to go over there. He's going to meet with uh, the Russians <clears throat> and because it was the Cold War, you know, so Reagan was like, hey, we, we should probably be friends now. And so him and Gorbachev were like buddies and hung out together. But one of the things that I found fascinating on the History Channel was that Reagan purposely like dressed up, you know, he had like a very nice suit and a very nice jacket you know, shoes are shine and stuff like that. So it was a comparison. He was going to show that capitalism uh, had better clothing than the communists did. And if you see a comparison um, between the president, I don't think at the time it was Gorbachev, but it was, um, you could see a big resemblance where it looked like the the president in Russia had like a kind of a used suit, as you should, because it's communism. So it should be, I mean, it shouldn't be spick and span um, but I always found that fascinating that that was the, that was the angle that Reagan was going at at the time. Um, William Hurt passed away at 71, a great actor. Um, just, I think he's a guy that, I think he ran into a little bit of trouble there because he had like a, a little bit of a, you know, he had a little boozy problem. Uh, so he, I think he hit a couple roadblocks in his career, but I always thought he was a g very gifted actor and, uh, somebody you really didn't see in the limelight a lot. Uh, but I really did enjoy his movies and I just saw one where he played, uh, he was like a journal. Yeah, he was a journalist. Michael, it was with John Travolta where John Travolta is an angel. I think I saw that like last week, not the greatest movie in the world, but, uh, that just reminded me of, um, William Hurt. 
And uh, I can't for the life of me think of any other movies, but he's been in probably um, hundreds of them, I would believe. I do think so. Uh, Joe Turkle was 94. He is the uh, guy that uh, was in The Shining. He was the bartender. Um, and he still looks exactly the same. I don't, I don't, his picture, there's no way this guy, this picture, so he's 94. I don't know. He looks like he's on the keto diet, but he looks great. Uh, Robbie Coltrane was 72. He of course was, um, the big guy with the beard in Harry Potter. I don't know what that character is. I'm not a Harry Potter. Don't get upset, but I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I thought the first Harry Potter was good. Uh, the rest of them I didn't follow. Um, I would like to go to the Harry Potter at Universal Studios in Los, An- in Los Angeles. Um, but it's, you know, it's not really on the bucket list there. I'd have no bucket list. I would like to go to the Millennium Falcon in Disneyland. Um, but I'm too lazy to walk that far. It's a lot of walking. So Robbie Coltrane, um, passed away. Ivan Reitman, the director, was 75. Loved him, loved everything that he did. Uh, just an all-around gifted filmmaker. Um, he's somebody that I've admired for a very long time. Of course, the comedian Gallagher, 76. Now, I find this very interesting with Gallagher um, because Gallagher became very famous probably 70s, 80s. It kind of looked like he was like traveling. He dressed like he was traveling with the Grateful Dead. Uh, and his whole thing, it really, really wasn't... He kind of gained notoriety smashing, um, f- you know, large fruits and then he would have people in the front audience, a couple, first couple rows that would have like, you know, you go to a show and you get like a poncho and you get uh, uh, plastic, you know, large plastic covering. So it was like the 80s, it was like the world was just coming to realize uh, what comedy could do. And so it was like, oh my gosh, this guy's smashing fruit. It's hilarious. I don't think anybody would find it hilarious anymore, but it was first person doing it. And then the odd thing was, so this is before the internet where you could like look it up, his brother, and I guess that he said that it was fine with him, his brother started going around the country or the world as Gallagher too, t- doing his exact same act. And I don't, somewhere along the lines, they started suing each other and didn't talk to each other, but I've read that originally he didn't seem to have a problem with his brother. I don't know, maybe his brother became more, maybe Gallagher 2 became more popular than Gallagher 1. I, I don't know, but I, I just find that very interesting where you see with the siblings that didn't become quite as popular, they get very upset. Because I know that Louis Anderson's brother also sued him, and he didn't really have a problem uh, paying him money either. Um, so, uh, hey, it's the holidays, it's family. What, what are you, what are you going to do? But I always did love Gallagher. Uh, it was a good, clean, fun comedy. And uh, I think that, uh, I don't know, He it seems like he was huge in the 80s and then kind of disappeared. So I don't even know what he's been up to. Or what he's been doing. Um, but he is missed. I really liked him. Another actor that is missed is Fred Ward. Because um, he was in this movie in the 80s, man. That it was like... I think it's Time... time something Time Writer or something. Uh, where he's on a bike and he goes through like this portal. And then he goes back to like the westerns. And then there's all the uh, cowboy guys. You know, and they're just like... We've never done seen an electric horse before. That's crazy. You know, and of course they try to kill him like every other 80s movie. And then he gets, finds this hot girl that's living like in a stick shack. And, you know, he takes her on the back of the bike. And they ride off back into... I think he brings the girl with him back into like 1985 or something like that. Um, and then the other movie that he was in that I loved was... Um, Remo Williams, The Adventure Continues, where he's like, he's a cop, and then he gets uh, basically killed, fake killed, um, but the CIA, like, pretends that he's dead to, then, you know, he goes and trains with the guy, and then the military uses him to, like, go kick ass, and it was supposed to be this franchise that I guess never worked out before, uh, but I always thought that it was a great um, movie, and I always thought that Fred Ward was such a great actor, he was 79, again, I didn't even realize he passed away either. Um, so he's somebody that is missed. And then Leslie Jordan, character actor, very, very, very nice man. Uh, and I know he had a car accident in Los Angeles and died right after that. And he was 67. Um, but what's interesting about Leslie was that, um, he, uh, he kind of was doing talk shows and stuff like that, like right before this. And he kind of looked to me like he'd kind of like revitalized his career a little bit. And then he had that accident and passed away. So it was like, here's you know he's back here he's you know going around on the circuit talking to people and then he passes away and and so i think that was a big shock for a lot of people um and also gilbert godfrey 67 so what i remember about gilbert godfrey was in uh 
probably the 80s. He's doing comedy, and then he comes up with squinting his eyes, and it's very hilarious. And he's kind of doing this, like, you know, um, self-deprecating, squinting his eyes. And he, uh, then I remember he was on some talk show where they were like, you know, I don't remember you squinting your eyes before. So it was like he had discovered his brand, and he was going to go with it, and it got him a bunch of movie roles, and he'd been squinting his eyes ever since. And I always loved Gilbert Godfrey, and I was sad that he had passed away. And I believe he's buried in New York. And he's a guy that I, I really do miss. Uh, Michelle Nichols was on Star Trek. She's 89 years old. And I uh, was never a Star Trek fan, but the fact, what I do like about Star Trek is it was like, um, it's only on for three seasons, and here we are a billion years later, and, and there's conventions and movies and books and everything about Star Trek. And uh, it's just great to see something like that come out of the imagination of a of sci-fi writer. And uh, she was on that show, and that became a career for her. Naomi Judd, 76, passed away. Um, she, of course, is a country music singer and a uh, um, very beautiful woman. Had two kids. One's also, she was singing with her daughter. I'm not a um, Naomi Judd fan, but I know that they won a lot of, she won a lot of awards with her daughter. And uh, I think that was kind of sudden. And I believe that she is buried. I think her ashes are scattered at their, uh, on her property. This is very interesting. I was reading that um, California saw 343,000 residents leave the state, more than any other state in the nation, followed by 300,000 that left New York, and almost 142 residents who fled Illinois. Um, at the same time, more Americans resettled into Florida, more than 318,000 went into Florida, and the second uh, largest was to Texas, 231,000, followed by North Carolina. So you've got people that are fleeing California, New York, and Illinois, and they're going to uh, Texas and Florida. Uh, I also believe a lot of people in North Carolina, which out of those three, I think I would pick North Carolina. Um, I'm more of... Uh, I'm more not moving because of uh, weather. I'd have to go check out the weather. And I think I mentioned this before, that when I went to Texas and I went to Florida, it, it was like this humidity that just like stuck to your skin. And you couldn't, I, I just imagine if I moved there, I would be uh, showering a lot because the heat was just so intense. Kind of like the heat that was in Arizona, which was like this mind bending um, heat and uh hopefully nobody over the uh holidays got their kids a weighted blanket i know these were really popular this year but they have now targets recalled 200,000 weighted blankets because two kids um died i'm not too sure um the circumstances of those deaths it's very sad but i would imagine because it's weighted and those i've seen i've i've had one of them um and it was just like kind of exhausting because of the weight but i guess it's good because you then feel I mean, it was nice. You felt like you were snugged in there. But I could also see where, because it's weighted, I, I think if it's covering your body, maybe you could suffocate from it. And it's not something that, uh, it's weighted. So, you know, it's harder probably to get out when you're asleep. I can only, now that I think about it, I can only imagine, like, you're asleep and that's covering your face. And, like, you're dreaming that you can't breathe. And, uh I don't know. I think it would be just scary. Uh, and so I can see why you would recall the weighted blankets. And uh, I'm definitely not going to be a weighted blanket person. I'll just have to deal with my anxiety in a, in a different way. Um, Christmas, which was kind of unusual because usually, I think, I don't know. I think I remember going to church on Christmas and it was... Maybe it was Christmas Eve. So I guess I did get it right. I take that back. But they did a uh, their little survey there about what people regretted. And I thought that it was interesting because it was a woman that had been a hospice nurse. And uh, what else are you going to do when you're at the end of your life but say all of your regrets? Especially if you've got a lot of regrets. Because I don't really think that people, for the most part... Um, we're not taught as society to ever think about that, really, even though I'm sure a lot of people are. I mean, I'm thinking about that all the time. But it's like your main focus in our American society is work. And so uh, the number one answer was, I wish that I had had the courage to live a life true to myself and not for the others expected. And I believe that is very hard, uh, especially when you have family and people are trying to dictate 
uh, or work when you're people are trying to dictate which how you should live your life. I think that's very hard. The second was I wish that I hadn't worked so hard, and I think that's true for everybody. But we're in this American society where it's just like just work harder. <laughs> There's no answer except just work harder. It's super annoying. It's what I don't like about our society. Um, when you look at other societies in around the world, it is taking time out to be with the family, and I think that that would make a difference. Um, you know, if you started out kind of this family oriented, we definitely don't do that here in the United States. And, um, you know, then everything's so expensive in so many different areas. I mean, I don't know how half, I don't know how anybody really survives in Los Angeles. It's so expensive. Um, not to mention I'm driving, you know, my, my job is driving around mostly. And I just see people, you know, walking their dog at nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, not a care in the world, going on hikes. And I just think to myself, I want to be the person that gets to go on hikes every single day. The third one was, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. And I just think that goes back to, uh, also in our society, we're told to just kind of shut up and suck up, suck it up and take it. And so, and then you get to the point, especially on social media where people, you know, you say something, you're trying to express your feelings and then, you know, a hundred people tell you that you're an idiot and a loser. And so you just figure to yourself, well, why even say anything? Um, so I can see that, but at the same time, we're a very negative society and I don't really blame anybody that doesn't really express their feelings because you do get shot down a lot. Um, number four was, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. I think that is a great regret, but I also think that, um, you know, friends can be annoying. So, you know, not all the time that your friends have your best interests at hand. And um, it's nice to think about it, but we're now in this place where you can access your friends all the time. And I don't think it was ever intended to be that way, but all aspects of your friends, you know, on social media, I think the way that it was before was, you know, you graduated from some school and you, you know, got married, you had a family, you really rarely ever saw those people or spoke to those people. And I kind of go back to thinking of like my grandparents where, uh, they didn't live very far away, but they didn't really talk all that much. And it would be, they would kind of save that information. Um, which I didn't quite agree with, but they would kind of save that information for when we came to visit them in person. And then they would talk about that. Cause now you're going to go to some of these family reunions where you just got nothing to talk about. Cause everybody knows all the stuff that you put on social media. Number five was, I wish I had let myself be happier. And I got to tell you, it's just impossible, not impossible, but it's almost impossible in this society where everything is so negative and everybody's telling you, you have to have all this stuff. And it really is hard not to take uh, things for granted. Um, and I don't, I think that that's number one for a lot of people when you're looking kind of keeping up with the Joneses, you're looking at what other people have and you're not thankful for what you have. And I think that there's a lot to be said for kind of living that, uh, minimalistic life of, uh, you know, seeing what, what really is important and are you trying to show off to your friend, you know, to friends or are you just, you know, trying to be content and humble. And it kind of goes back to, you know, live a life of uh, being good and doing good. And I think that that will get you by. And I was very sad to see him go. And that is Fred Ward. He was born in 1942, December 30th, 1942. So that is very sad that we um, passed right around the holidays. Uh, he, uh, of course is an American actor and producer starring in role. He started roles in Italian television in 1973. Um, he, uh, was born in San Diego. He, uh, his father was, uh, an alcoholic criminal who was repeatedly imprisoned and his mother left him when he was three. He was raised by his grandmother until his mother had rebuilt her life and remarried a carnival worker. That is a, a crazy bio. Before acting, uh, he Fred Ward spent three years in the United States Air Force. He was a boxer, breaking his nose three times. And uh, he worked as a lumberjack in Alaska, a janitor, and a short-order cook. He studied acting in New York at the um, Huber. Living in Rome, he dubbed Italian movies into English and appeared in films um, with director Roberto Rossellini. Had no idea that he lived in Rome. Um, Fred Ward, look him up if you don't know who he is, but... I just always thought he was like uh, just the a man's man, the uh, tough guy. Uh, I don't know. He was always just an actor that I that I that I would definitely want to um, to meet. He uh, after studying or after being in uh, Italy, he worked as a uh, mime 
which you would never know that he worked as a mime. Upon returning to the United States in the 70s, he spent time working in experimental theater and doing television work. He made his first TV appearance playing a cowboy in Hearts of the West 1975. His first major role came in uh, Clint Eastwood's uh, Escape from Alcatraz 1979 as fellow escapee John Anklin. That's a great movie. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe because I worked in a prison, I always had an affinity for Alcatraz. But if you ever get a chance, go to Alcatraz, uh, take a tour of the prison, because one of the few places that you can actually tour a prison. And uh, actually, when I went on a tour there, they put you in the hole, which is the worst hole I've ever been in, which is basically just a darkened room. So you're you're stuck in there. Uh, uh, you know, there's just basically, you're, you're in the complete darkness, and there's a hole in the ground. And you're basically, I don't know, that's to me a deterrent for not going to um, prison. In the 80s, Fred Ward played a uh, National, Guardman's, a National Guardsman in Southern Comfort, 1981. Another great movie, um, Southern Comfort. He uh, then starred in Time Rider, The Adventure of Lyle Sw uh, Swan. Or is it Swain? But uh, that's another great movie where he go, basically go, he's on a motorcycle. He goes back in time. I think I talked about this the other day, but it's... You know, he, he goes back to the 1800s and all the, the you know, it, back into basically um, the Wild West. where they, it's a, He's driving a mechanical horse, that guy right there. He was in The Right Stuff, another great movie. He was in Uncommon Valor with Gene Hackman and uh, in the movie Silkwood, 1983. Silkwood's another great movie. Uh, he was in Swing Shift and a movie that I always loved was uh, Secret Admirer, 1985. He... Uh, then was in Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. So this movie, Remo Williams, was supposed to be like, um, it was based off the series, The Destroyer novels. And it was supposed to be like, there were, at the time, it was awarded that it was going to be a three movie deal and all this stuff. And it was supposed to be, he was going to be this next action star. It's such a great movie, but it didn't do well in the theaters. It only grossed 15 million. So they never made sequels, which I always thought that they should. Um, of course, he went on to play in the 90s in Tremors. Uh, another movie I loved him in was The Player. A lot of people will remember him from Tremors, because uh, I think, what are we on, like, the fifth Tremors movie? I think that there are. He, uh, of course, was just a talented actor. He uh, was married three times, had a kid, had one child, and he passed away uh, May 8th, 2002, in Los Angeles, California, at the age of 79. His uh, family declined to cite... The cause of his death, which seems to be a lot of families are refusing to uh, do that. But, uh, man, he's just one of those actors that she never thought was going to pass away. Um, and I will always uh, treasure watching his movies. Um, like, subscribe, tell me else you want me to see Famous Graves on TikTok. This is the Famous Graves podcast.